Hey guys, welcome to Thriving Drive. Today we're doing something maybe a little different than showing where we're at. And uh, we've been having a lot of people asking about like maintenance. How do we do that? How do we perform that like while we're on the road? And we want to be able to show you guys on what we do and being able to maintain our rig so that uh, we can keep it going down the road and we don't have any problems with it. Uh, I always tell people, they say, always ask me, what's that one thing that is the most important? And I would say, if the wheels don't go around, you don't go nowhere. So maintaining your bearings, maintaining uh, your tires are very, very important. We talked about the um, tire pressure monitoring system already. And today we're going to be talking about uh, maintaining your bearings and your dexter axles, our axles on your camper. And we're going to show you how we uh, take them apart, do the maintenance on them, uh, and then uh, basically get them all put back together and what you're going to need and the tools that you're going to need to have in order to do this. Uh, I really feel like that if you're on the road full time, that you should have all the tools because you never know. It's not if, it's when bearings might go out. And if you're on the road long enough, you know what I'm talking about because you've already experienced it and you probably already carry an extra set of bearings with you in the tools. But if you don't and you're just getting on the road, then this is something that I really feel like that it's really good for you to watch. So stick around. We're going to show you everything that you need to have. Uh, so if you do break down, you have to pull out of a rest stop and you have to re uh, replace your bearings, you're not in a moment of, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So stick with us and we're going to show you what you got to do and what you need to have. All right. This is what it looks like, people. It's glorious. Check it out. So the first thing I want to do is show you all uh, all the tools that you're going to need to have. I'm going to also show you the grease, the type of grease, uh, the type of uh, bearings that we have, our seals, and then explain some of the parts on your uh, on your camper so that you under have a little bit of an understanding of how everything works, and so that you're not totally confused. So this is just more of a the tools parts we're going to leave towards the end so that you can focus on just some of the other parts. So if you're brand new, you, you just just bought a rig and you, you don't know what all the parts are. And everybody's been there, so please don't, don't feel silly about it uh, because we've all been there. 
Uh, there's a couple things that we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and go over. So I'm going to jump right into this right now. The first thing I want to show you guys is this. This right here, what you're looking at, it is the, it's that called a hanger or it's called a shackle that belongs to your, that basically is welded onto the frame of your camper and that your leaf springs basically attach to. Your leaf springs are what basically gives your camper flex. When you look under, look underneath, you'll see a whole bunch of little bars that go across. They have a U-bolt that holds onto the axle. Uh, I do have some extra U-bolts. I, I don't know why I didn't get them out so I can show them to you. Um, but that is, this holds onto your leaf spring. And then of course, from your leaf springs, it goes down, uh, down to your axle. You have U-bolts that hang on from your, from your leaf springs to your axles holds it all together uh, so it's important every so often uh, to make sure you look at these and take a flashlight you're gonna look at the top part of the uh, of the shackle uh, or the hanger to make sure there's no fractures and if there is you want to get to a welder and they can fix that for you okay so always you, when you see this just look underneath your camper you'll see what I'm talking about so you want to check these every so often for stress fractures and make sure that you don't have any problems with them because you don't want one of these to break. We've had that happen and we've had to have a, a welder come out and put it back on for us, okay? So in your leaf springs, so where the hole is on the shackle or hanger, there's a bolt that goes through there and your leaf springs that come out the back, you have um bushings that are inside the leaf springs okay it's very important to maintain the bushings they're just a, they're a piece of nylon and so you want to make sure that that bushing is in there um some of the newer campers actually have a bolt that has a grease search so you can shoot grease in it and every time that i say about every five to six thousand miles you want to shoot a little grease in them bolts that hold on to your leaf springs okay a lot of times people forget about that and when they have dry out it's just metal against metal and what ends up happening is is eventually your leaf spring breaks all right you don't want to be on a vacation and your leaf your leaf spring or out on the road and your leaf your leaf spring breaks because you didn't shoot a little grease into the grease cert okay very important to make sure you put grease in them all right but these are bushings the bushings keep the uh, nylon that's what rubs up and down on the bolt um, on, inside your uh, leaf springs okay your leaf springs then go down uh, you have a u-bolt and that u-bolt is what attaches to your axle all right so now we're going to start getting into more of the axles and the bearings so you understand what they are um, so when you get down to the axle um, you have what comes out of the axle is called a spindle. And I, you, the, I'm gonna show you this, you're probably seeing it right now. That's a spindle. Um, the spindle is really important because that's where all your bearings and everything sit on that and they rotate around it, okay? Um, from there, uh, you have what they call your inner and your outer bearing, all right? So, this is your inner bearing. This is your outer bearing, okay? Massive difference when you're looking at these, all right? The inner bearing goes all, the, it goes closer to the underneath side of the camper, inside of your, uh, inside of your hub, all right? And this goes on the outside. So if you um, pull off the cap, and look inside, you'll see a little rubber boot. You pull that rubber boot off, there's a grease cert in there. But you can normally about see this, the top of this bearing right here. All right? And then basically that's what you put your grease in. But these are what's inside of the, the hub assembly on a camper. All right, let me jump into something else. I'm gonna show you guys what uh, your cuff is. You have what they call a cuff 
And so inside of your rotor, this is a cuff, all right? So if you ever have to replace your bearings, you always replace the cuff that goes with it. All right, you pop it out. And I'm gonna show you how to do that and what tool you have to use so you don't damage this. Because if you damage this, this isn't gonna work properly and you're gonna have a mess. So I'm gonna show you um, how to inspect these two. So it's really important to know how to inspect a cuff that goes inside because, and you're probably wondering, how is this, what is this, what's the importance of a cuff? It looks like a piece of metal. Well, you take this bearing and you sit it in there. Look at that. That's what your bearings rotate on. All right. Now, I didn't know this and I've had to learn this. Uh, I was lucky to have a dad that let me take things apart and figure things out. So it's important to know how these things work so that you know what you're doing when you go to replace or when you go to do the you know, your annual maintenance. Because this all has to be greased and repacked um, every 12,000 miles. So it's important to know what that is. So each set of bearings has a cuff. So if you look, this little bearing here, I'm gonna put the big one down. The little bearing also has a cuff too. And I'm gonna show you where these are at inside that uh, rotor, okay? And they, it, as you can see, it slips right in there. You can see how it sits in there, okay? Really important to maintain these. Wheels don't go around, you don't go nowhere. All right, so that is, we're gonna get to this in a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to work on these. Maintain them. All right, so you have an inner seal. All right, a lot of people talk about the inner seal. Well, my inner seal went out. Well, when your inner seal goes out and you're on the road, well, basically what ends up happening is um, you're stuck on the side of the road and you have to replace these uh, because you'll lose all your grease. A lot of times it'll up ruin the bearings and ruining the, ruin the cuff. All right, bearing, cuff, all right. Put it all together, all sits in there like that. So if it dries out or gets ruined, you got to replace both of them okay so this right here this inner seal we're going to show you where this goes too and every time you repack your bearings every time you repack your bearings you replace this okay every time all right and you want to replace it with the original parts so like for us we have dexter axles these are all dexter parts all right don't get anything outside of Dexter because you don't know how it's going to react and uh, I always carry an extra set of bearings and an, an ex extra seals because I unfortunately have had it happen coming out of Georgia we lost a bearing and the good news is is I had all the tools and everything that I needed in order to put everything back together now it took me a little bit to get it all put back together on the side of the road but I was able to do it and get right back to our scheduled program and uh, be able to get up to Tennessee anyways I highly recommend buying an extra set of bearings for your camper all right so rear seal all right this is so you have a castle bolt this is a castle bolt washer as you can tell there's something weird about this washer you can notice a little piece of steel and I'm gonna show you how this comes in and out but it just sits on your spindle and pushes in. I'm gonna show you all this here in just a minute. I know this probably sounds foreign to you, but important to know what that is. You gotta make sure you have one of this because your castle bolt, your castle bolt sits up against this washer so it doesn't sit up against your bearings, all right? And then you have spindle nut retainer that sits right next to the uh, castle bolt. This clips on top of this, all right? These are the last things. This is what holds on the whole rotor, okay? So if these come off, your tire comes off, all right? And we've been on the road long enough. We had, the when we first bought our camper in one of our episodes, um, you will see this spindle nut retainer had popped off of our castle bolt, okay? And when that happened, the rotor sat down on the end of the spindle and chewed it off. So we had to have 
a whole new axle put on our camper. Now, Grand Design did a fantastic job. They were able to take care of us in about three days. Um, so that's pretty amazing. So they've done a really, they did a really good job taking care of us because of the warranty. Uh, but if you ever break down, you just want to make sure you have the extra stuff. And I would say, as you can see, this comes in a set. You can just buy this. This is something that if you can find, um, you can find this normally like in a tractor supply, uh, they'll normally have this set. Now, if you have an old, the old style spindle, the old, old style spindle, you don't have a spindle nut retainer. You have a castle bolt that has grooves cut out and you have a carter pin. That's what that is right there. A carter pin that goes through your spindle. So you have a spindle, it goes through your spindle and that's what holds on the tire uh, with the nut. This just keeps the nut from backing off of the spindle, okay? So that's what keeps it all together. I know that sounds crazy, but that little thing there keeps the tire from basically the nut backing off and uh, and your tire flying off. So, so that's inside. So we're gonna go through that uh, one more time when I have everything pulled apart, okay? All right. So now we are we are going to go ahead and dive into um, the tools. Actually, let's let's dive into the uh, the uh, the types of grease, and we're going to type in the types of cleaner that you use in order to be able to just do your general maintenance. So when you when I'm talking about general maintenance, um, the first part is every five to six thousand miles, you're going to want to put a little bit of grease in each one of your axles if you have if you have the easy grease um, axles and I'm going to show you how to do that uh, here in a few minutes all right so that's really important now it's really important to find out what is recommended what is recommended by the uh, the manufacturer and what type of grease to use uh, if you don't use the right type of grease, you can tear a lot of things up. Um, you can cause a lot of damage. So it's really important to use the right type of grease. You want to use, especially in parts that are moving continuously, high temp grease. How can you tell? Uh, how can you tell? Is because a lot of times, if you look, it comes in a red tube. All right, it's red grease. So if you look, in, if you look inside here, that's red grease and that's high temp grease okay whatever type of grease whatever you're manufacturing your manufacturer has a list of types of grease that you can use you want to buy that manufacturer's grease and don't use anything else and you don't mix grease because if you mix grease the compounds can be highly corrosive when they mix together and so highly corrosive doesn't work on bearings very well so you don't want to do that so make sure you use a high temp grease so I hope you guys understand this is stuff that I had to learn some of the stuff that I had to learn the hard way I don't want anyone else to have to learn like I did so I'm just trying to share this knowledge so make sure you use the right grease and whatever type of grease which we have picked this brand I stick with this brand I don't change my brands all right so stick with this grease and stick with the right stick with the brand that you once you pick it okay all right so cleaners it's gonna sound crazy but I'm using, um, it's a solvent. You can buy a very cheap solvent and it'll tell you it removes oil, grease, brake dust, uh, brake fluid, um, and then it doesn't leave any type of residue behind. This is a brake part cleaner. Um, you can use carb cleaner, uh, but you're gonna use this to clean off your bearings and clean everything out so you don't have a, 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 any of the old grease that's gonna be mixed in with this new grease, okay? So, cause you're doing a, I'm, we're doing a, a, a complete repack of our bearings. Okay, so this is the cleaner that you wanna use. You don't have to use this brand. I just got this at Walmart and it was cheap. It was like a, a couple dollars per can. Spray it in there, wipe it out. Doesn't leave any residue behind. And that's the most important part. Do not use mineral spirits. Um, back in the day, uh, that's what people use. They used to pour it in a bucket, use mineral spirits, or use gasoline. Uh, or though you get yeah, diesel fuel, no clean. But the problem is, is that now if you use that, what they have found is that could be 
Uh, the residual that's left over can be um, damaging. So I highly recommend just buy solvent that will just wash it off, wash off the ogre, and does not leave any type of residue behind. You just don't want to take any chances, especially if you're living on the road or if you're in your camper and you're really far away from home, all right? So if you have to do this on the side of the road, I say carry a can of this. Make sure you have a couple tubes of grease, a grease gun. Uh, remember the type of grease that you get. Only use that type. Uh, I say it's, it's important just to put yourself a little kit together. Buy an extra set of bearings just in case you have to replace the bearings. If you don't want to do your own bearings, that's completely okay. I still say have a set of bearings because if the tow truck driver, when he shows up, he has to look at your vehicle and he's going to charge you an hourly rate to go find your bearings, which could take a long time, and then he's going to come back to put them bearings on. He's going to keep charging you while he's out. So if you already have your set of bearings and you already know what you need to do and you don't want to do it, you want to have that tow truck driver, at least then all you have to do is just hand him the stuff Put a little kit together, hand him the stuff, and say, can you please put this on my camper for me? And you know what? He's going to knock it out pretty quick because he's got air tools. He can he can do it because he's done it a million times. So a tow, a tow truck driver. And then tractor trailer companies, they're 24 hours. Their equipment's oversized. And I say that, you know, if you can, make sure you touch bases with them guys too if you can't get a hold of a tow truck driver. They're everywhere all over the country to keep tractor trailers on on the road, their equipment's oversized, they can do this lickety split. All right, that's just a word of advice, but make sure you have solvent, make sure you have a grease gun, make sure you have the right type of grease, make sure you have your bearings, one set of bearings will do, you don't have to have a whole bunch of bearings. Uh, make sure you have an extra set of castle bolt um, with you. So if you're planning to do a long trip, make sure you have all these things, all right? You don't have to have the tools. If you just want to have a tow truck driver to do it, they can do it for you, all right? So the rear seal, I want to talk about this one more time. I almost forgot. So if you're replacing or if you're doing any type of maintenance on your, um, on your bearings once a year, you'll have to buy a set of seals. So four of, I have four tires, I have to buy four of these. When you pull the old one out, you're going to damage it. So throw it away. Make sure you have a new set. And then you're going to use a high temp sealant that you're going to place around this edge. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Place it around that edge. Okay? And then, once you place it around the edge, you're going to take this um, rear seal. You're going to take a block of wood. I just have a big piece of nylon that won't damage this. I put this back on my rotor. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to place that piece of plastic on it and I'm going to hit with a hammer center of this and drive that seal back into the rear of the rotor to hold the bearings in and to hold on my grease in so it doesn't leak out. Okay? So you have to have you have to have one of these. All right? Your bearing sets, when you go to purchase them, they will all come in one set. It'll come with the new cuffs They'll come with the bearings, they'll come with a seal, they'll come with a, a, um, a carter pin, um, and a lot of times uh, they'll come with a washer, all right? So it'll all come in one set, so it makes it really easy. Once you buy one, throw it, throw it in your camper, hold on to it, because you never know when you might have to do this. Okay, let's jump into tools. Tools that you're gonna need. Um, of course, first, you're going to need one of these, a four-way, um, to be able to pop off all your lug nuts, okay? So then, you're going to have to take off the spindle nut retainer. So, in order to do that, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver. You're going to take it, it's basically a wire cage, it sits on the spindle nut, you put it in between and you start popping it off. You won't damage it, you're not gonna hurt it. Just don't get really aggressive with it, okay? You're gonna need a flathead screwdriver. From there, you're gonna have to back off the um, spindle nut. You will have to buy that socket. You're gonna back that nut off, okay? After you use this, you're basically at that point gonna take the rotor off. And once you get it off there, on the very back side, 
to take out the rear seal. Um, you're going to basically use like a, a little crowbar to pop it out. You got to be careful because you don't want to damage your bearings. Okay. So you're just going to basically use this. You can use a screwdriver. You just start slowly prying it over, up all the way around. You're going to pry up, pry up that rear seal. It'll pop it right out. And then after that, um, once you pry that rear seal out and you're able to move their bearings, if you have to replace the cuffs, again, bearings, you'll be able to pull the bearings out. This is your cuff. If you have to replace this, this is set in there with pressure all the way around. So it's in there snug. You will not be able to pull this out with your hands. So you will have to buy brass, okay? Brass. That's the key word here. A brass punch. If you have to pull this out, how you inspect these, you'll leave them in. Once you pull the bearings out and you clean them, you're going to look inside here at this cuff. If you see stress fractures, um, you'll, you'll see them because the grease will be packed down inside these things and they'll look like little slivers that'll come down inside of them. If you see stress fractures, if you see discoloration, if you see major gnawed out um, scratches inside this cuff, this has to be replaced. You cannot leave it. And if you replace this, you must replace this. Because if this is damaged, this caused the damage. Hopefully I made myself clear on that. I know that there's some people that, and I used to be one of them, that would be like, ah, oh, you know, I can get by and I'll just replace this thing. And I wouldn't replace this. And that'll get you in trouble. And don't be like me. I'm not like that no more. I've learned my lesson. Replace them both. Okay? Just get you a whole new set. They're cheap. They're like 30 bucks. So if you're doing this, you can afford $30. Replace the whole set. All right. A lot of times, people will try to use a metal punch. So, this is metal punches. That is a brass punch. Don't use these. If you have them, put them away so you don't accidentally use a metal punch versus brass. The reason why, brass is soft. So it will not cause damage to this, because you have to hit it. If you crack that, and you can cause a hairline crack in these, it'll fail. And if it fails, your bearings fail. Guess where you're sitting? On the side of the road. And you don't want to sit on the side of the road. Use a brass punch. Alright? If you have these metal punches, put them somewhere else. Get them out of your tool bag, unless you're using it for something else. Just make sure you don't use metal on there. Cause damage, it's gonna mess things up, okay? So, back in the day when I was a kid, I would've used that metal punch. If you don't have a brass punch, get you a brass punch, cause these won't cause damage. These will bend, um, these will dent, but they're brass and that's what they're made to do and every so often you have to replace these. No big deal. All right, so I think I've went over everything. So, oh, one more thing. This, this driver looks funny. I know it does, but what this is, is what you use to put torque on the bolt. And you can t it'll tell you how much torque is on each bolt. If you don't have one of these, get you one. It's gonna make a big difference because if you over tighten any bolts, they'll break. So if you don't want to over tighten, my father-in-law will tell you like 80%, 90% of the most of the time why bolts break is because they've been torqued too much. If you don't know how much torque should be on a bolt, on a nut, look it up because it's out there. You can Google it and it'll tell you. And all you have to do is you turn it right here and it'll turn it to where it says how much torque that you're putting on it. When you literally start pushing down on this, or here, you're pushing down on this, I don't know if I can do it, it'll click. That means it has the proper amount 
of torque on the nut or on the bolt. Okay? So that's the reason it's in really important to get one of these. All right? So you can go to pretty much um, any Napa, AutoZone uh, store to be able to pick one of these up. All right. Oh, and I don't want to forget, get you a good grease gun because that's going to be really important. All right. Um, I believe we are ready to get going. Um, I like to buy uh, towels, the shop towels, because once you fill them full of grease, you can just throw them away. You don't have to worry about getting grease everywhere else. And then also, last but not least, gloves. And I believe that's what you're going to need in order to be able to um, service your bearings. And then, uh, or if you're stuck on the side of the road, um, you're going to need all this stuff to um, be able to take it all apart and be able to get it all put back together so that you can get back on the road. So hopefully this has been helpful. We're gonna jump into tearing apart our, uh, our tires, get into our rotors and pull our bearings out. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step on how I do that also. So anyway, stick with us so you can see the whole process. I'm also gonna down below, I'm gonna put down some links, Dexter Axle, has a a um a step-by-step -step process for dextra now everybody's axles are a little different so i would strongly recommend to go to your uh manufacturer on whoever the manufacturer how do you know which manufacturer if you crawl out into the middle of your axle uh, underneath your camper and look there's a serial number and it's usually there's a name right underneath it that'll tell you what type of axle you have so once you find that information out you can go to youtube uh plug in how to maintain how to do the maintenance on my axle and I promise you you're gonna probably have a million other things that's gonna come up to tell you how much torque you're supposed to have on your castle bolts remember your castle bolts a torque wrench all right make sure you have the right socket for that uh, that's all gonna be it's all gonna be shared with you um, on there from the recommended on the manufacturers recommended um, but ours is Dak Dexter I've looked it up uh, and checked what I have to do in order to do this uh, I watched the video I watched the video every time right before I do it because I don't want to forget something okay just to remind myself so anyways let's jump into this so you can see how this is done and uh, we'll uh, we'll knock it out so that you know you guys will be able to be a pro at it uh, like I'm trying to be. So anyways, uh, stick with us.